Hello, video introduction for a car, tool, shock absorber, spring compressor. This allows you to take the spring off the shock absorber to replace it. Notice it's clamped here. There was a problem. This clamp was bent and needed repairing. So in this video, you'll see some Elliott 10M shaper action, some TIG welding, and then some horizontal milling on the Harrison mill. Hope you like it. My son got this for 50 quid and there's a problem with the clamp. So he was trying to use it last night to change the springs, well actually to change the shock absorbers. So he had to get the springs off for the Volkswagen Passat W8. And as he clamped the body of the shocker in here, and he um, compressed the spring, the shocker was sort of like dropping down. Click, click, click. So he finds that this part here is caved in and this bit here is pushed down. So this needs to come off and we need to straighten it so that it's clamping equally on there, there and there, I suppose. So it needs a bit of, a bit of love to sort that out. So there's a pin through there. There's a spring clip on it. And I presume now we can just pull this up, uh, maybe, and we're off, look. You see how it's bent in here, and it's bent down here. Well, we can sort that out, I think. There's actually another hole there. I don't know whether it means that it, ah, it's got like two settings, hasn't it? For I bet he didn't know this, for large diameter and small diameter. Yeah, that could be part of the problem. This is what I mean, look. So the pen was in that one, but it could go in that one, and this would then clamp up a smaller diameter. Anyway, we'll fix this. Right, what we're gonna do with this then? So I think first off, what we need to do is bend this out and bend this in. So I might try just putting something down here and hammering it along. Don't know what yet. And then I'm going to put some spacers in here and weld it either side so that this can't be crushed closed like that again. And then once that's done and welded, I'm going to recut this here. But we'll come on to that later. If you can hear any noise in the background, it's my son and his friend chatting just the other side of that door. It's not very thick, this, look. I think it'll just bend into shape. I think this chisel goes clear on that one. Put it in this one, should open that out. The old brute force approach should work. Keep the fingers out as much as I can. This shape is really quiet now since I made those improvements. Did it in a series of videos you probably saw, maybe saw, might have seen. You should watch it if you haven't. So just taking about three millimeters off this and that block will act as a spacer. Cut in two, one side, other side. I'm hoping this block doesn't push out because it's not a particularly strong vise that. That's about 0.3 of a millimetre cut. I don't think I'll take it any more aggressive than that with that particular vise. Not when we're cutting 
this way. Just makes it a lot quicker though than cutting across. You know, where the workpiece is at 90 degrees to what you can see. Plenty of chips going on the floor. Milling would be quicker, but come on guys, this is more interesting, isn't it? Well, it looks like the oiler system is working okay. Is it possible to get too much video of a shaper in action? I don't think so. So that's the packing blocks made, right width, chamfered them underside because this is where it's formed is curved. Press those two in, bring them to here and then weld them. I've positioned this on a 45 degree magnet so I can weld along here and then flip it and do the other side. An advantage of TIG is if you don't get it right the first time you can just go back over it and reflow it which is what I did so the next step is to recut this shape I mean I could file it but I don't want to so I've got three options really I could mount it like this with the vertical mill use a boring head and cut it I could put it on a face plate on the lathe, which would be quite fun. But it also, another option is, this cutter is just about right. It's four and a quarter inches. And I could do it on the horizontal mill, which is what I've chosen to do, just for the fun of it. I'm set up. I've only done this by eye because that's all it merits. And I'll just run it across that face there to recut it. Now setting this up has caused me to realise I've still got quite a few housekeeping jobs to do. So I need to make some proper seating blocks here to clamp this vise down because these are too soft. They only bend. It was temporary. But also I need to cut the tramming blocks that sit in the base of this because I think they're 18 millimetre wide and this is a lot narrower. So there's a few little jobs I really should have done but never quite were my priority at the time. You can hear it's just cutting. I'll do one pass and I'll just see where it's brightening up. I may just need to adjust the table. It's going okay though, look, at the moment. <laughs> It's about equal actually. That's cut very nicely. This is a 0.1 of a millimetre cut. It does seem to be equal both sides. This is much more interesting to me than using a boring head. I mean, it's not for nothing they're called a boring head. Probably the last cut. 
still only 0.1 millimeter cuts for thou. I'll let this run to the end for those who like to see machining. This is where it would be good to have a machine crossfeed, you know, a y-axis crossfeed. I think that'll do. I think that was one of the most enjoyable bits of machining I've done in a while. And as Phil Whiteley says on his channel, My Week This Week, these horizontal cutters, they don't have to get through stuff. They're slow to turn, but they're very effective. I'll just file the edges of this to take the, you know, the, uh, what do you call it? Edges off. What's the edges called? <laughs> Burrs off. And clean it up, and that'll do. Cleaned up, deburred. You know, I really enjoyed that job. I much prefer repairing things to making things. Thanks for watching.